The goal of this video is to show you how to take a free body diagram and create two math equations from it. This video is going to show you two instances, one with no acceleration. acceleration. To begin with, I've got this object on an inclined surface. That's the purple diagonal line that I have there. And for this problem, I have no net force. So whatever this object is, it's either at rest along the inclined plane or it's moving at a constant velocity. But the point is, there's no net force. First thing I'll do is choose my coordinate system. So I might choose something like I have in math class, just perfectly vertical and perfectly horizontal. If I do this, what I have to do is I have to take every force that's not either perfectly vertical or horizontal and break it up into a triangle to find horizontal and vertical components. So that means I've got to break up F2, I have to break up the normal force, and in this case I have to break up F, whatever that is. So that's going to be a lot of trig, and it's going to make for a long formula and a lot more possibilities for mistakes. There's got to be an easier way, and there is. When you have an inclined surface, one of the easy things to do is to choose a coordinate system that's parallel and perpendicular to the surface. And so that'll make the math a little bit easier. So I'm taking my little coordinate system and rotating it parallel to the surface in this case. All right, so now let's kind of continue on with this. At this point, I only have to break up the weight into a component that's going to be 90 degrees to each other, and it's going to be 90 degrees to the surface, and then parallel to the surface along the bottom. Cool, so I only have one piece of trade to work with. That's going to make life a little bit easier for me. But I've got some work to do. I've got to figure out this angle up here. It's kind of a bluish-green angle. So to figure out this angle, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a line at the tip of the F-force, and I can see a triangle on the left. And because of similar triangles, that angle is going to be theta. And this angle is drawn, so it's 90, because the weight goes straight down in my line that I've drawn, the, the dotted gray line, is perpendicular. That means the angle on the top of the triangle, that's going to be the complementary angle, which is 90 minus theta. Now the way this is drawn, I can see that my red line it's actually 90 degrees from the inclined surface. So if that green represents 90 degrees, I know part of it is 90 minus theta, then this other piece over here is 90 minus 90 minus theta. In other words, it's just theta. So for the angle down below, it's just the same angle up here at the top. It's also going to be theta. Now I can use trig. So the adjacent side is going to be W cosine theta, and the opposite side is going to be the weight times sine theta. Now I'm on my way. At this point, I don't need the weight anymore, so I'm just going to ignore it for all the calculations and deal with just the components that I have drawn on the screen. Next, I'm going to focus on all the forces in the x-direction. So I'm going to fade the forces in the y-direction, and I'll start by summing up the forces in the x-direction equals, now it always equals the net force. In this case, there is no net force, so it's equal to zero, nice and simple. And then what I'm going to do is write out my equation. So that's going to be equal F2 minus F minus W sine theta. See, when I drew my x, I made my x go up the incline. And f2 also points up the incline. So f2 in my equation, they're all positive. By writing my coordinate system, that means up the incline is positive. f2 points up the incline, so it's positive. And in my formula, that's why it's positive down there. So this is going to give me the equation of 0 is equal to f2 minus f minus w sine theta. And the f and the w sine theta, they're negative because they point in the opposite direction of f2. Now let's look at forces that are perpendicular to the uh, incline. So I have eta and w cosine theta. I'll start it off the same way, sum with the forces in the y direction equals the net force. Well, there isn't a net force because there are none drawn or indicated on here. So that's going to be equal to zero. And then what I'm going to do is make all the forces equal to, start with the normal force. Now the normal force is positive because I've drawn y to go up and normal force goes in the same direction. That means that eta, the normal force, the n, is going to be also positive minus all the forces go the opposite direction, which in this case is W cosine theta. So that's going to be the equation of 0 is equal to N minus W cosine theta, which gives me the pair of equations that I talked about in the beginning. But let's do a little what if. What if there was a net acceleration? And this net acceleration went down the incline. So this is what changes about the diagram. So now I've got my net acceleration drawn, and it doesn't touch the body because it's not a force that acts on the body. It's the result of all these other forces. So what changes in my equations? Well, if that's going down, the first thing I ought to do is change, well, let's look at uh, the horizontal forces first, actually. So if I do this and look at it, I gotta change my coordinate system. I'm not gonna have x going up anymore. Instead, I'm gonna make positive x going the same direction as ma net. So positive x goes the same direction as ma net. So always make ma net positive. It just makes your math a little bit easier. So if I set up the forces in the x direction, so I'm going to the force in the x direction equals, well, it doesn't equal zero, it equals the net force, which in this case is not zero, it's F net, 
whereas I'm going to write it MA net. But writing it out as MA net, again, it'll make some of the math easier later. Now, what else does this change? Well, MA net is positive. So it's positive my formula, and that means that going down the incline is positive because MA net points down the incline. Well, F also points down the incline, and so does W sine theta. So my math expression, F is now going to be positive, and W sine theta is now going to be positive. And F2, well, that goes the opposite direction of these, so it's going to be negative sign, because that's what the negative sign means, the opposite of. And that'll change my top equation in the box down below to MA net is equal to F minus W sine theta minus F2. So the important takeaway in this is that MA net determines the positive direction. Everything that matches MA net is going to be positive in the equation. Everything that goes the opposite direction of MA net is negative in the equation. And I'm going to adjust my coordinate system so that it goes parallel to MA net and perpendicular to MA net whenever I have an MA net or a net force.